As a driven dentist, you see the world differently. Where some see scarcity, you see abundance. When others want to give up, you keep going. You're building an amazing life of significance. That means you can't rely on ordinary advice from ordinary advisors to get to your goals. You want advice that's going to help maximize your net worth so you can take even better care of the people you love, the causes you care about, and make your dent in the universe. But the fact is, this advice remains hidden because relatively few professionals are well-versed in them, and the extremely affluent don't care to let you know about them. Join us as we pull back the curtain to reveal the often hidden advice and strategies used by today's most successful individuals and families. Welcome to Dental Wealth Nation. Here's your host, Tim McNeely. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Dental Wealth Nation. And wow, am I excited for you today. We're going to be talking about how you, that's right, you listening right now, you can become the most trusted dentist in your town. And by the time we finish today, you're going to really have a, a, a platform. You're going to have a, a plan and you're going to know what it takes. What do you have to do to become the most trusted dentist in your town? You're going to have a clear path for becoming the most trusted dentist. And, and wow, do we have a surprise. Our, our guest today, Stuart Fott, is actually going to show you how you can get 300 reviews. So you're going to have a clear path to becoming the most trusted dentist. But even more importantly, you're going to feel that this is something you can do. This is not out of reach. This is absolutely something you can do. And our guest today is Stuart Fott. And, and Stuart is, is one of the founders and the innovators in the dental review space. In fact, he had one of the first companies to help dentists just like you get reviews online. He's worked with over 2,000 practices and he knows the good, the bad, the ugly, and he's got a path to help you become that trusted dentist. Stuart, welcome to the show. Tim, what's up, man? Thanks for that intro. It's good to yeah. be here with you. Hey, I, I am excited. And you know, whether you're a dentist or not, reviews matter. And so so let's dive into a little bit about how you got started and tell us your story. Sure, sure. So yeah, back uh, back in the day, first job out of college, um, I had a, a neighbor that worked at Dentrix. And this was around 2008. And out of college, I thought I was going to be the next, uh, you know, real estate lord. And uh, as it turned out, it was the worst time ever to get into real estate. And so I had a buddy that was working at Dentrix and ended up uh, working at Dentrix, you know, for a couple of years and, and uh, sort of honestly fell in love with the business side of dentistry, you know, and, uh, you know, was there for a couple of years and, 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 you know, again, like the dental space, but was, was looking around for other opportunities. And I started hearing about the whole, you know, SEO thing, search engine optimization, um, back in gosh, like 2010 when that was a new thing. And so I broke out of Dentrix and started my own little, uh, SEO company for dentists. And, uh, it was interesting, man. I, I went out and worked with a couple hundred practices and quickly learned that, you know, really what was getting a patient from the internet to the chair was whoever had the most and best reviews. And so I thought like, you know, this was kind of before any other review company out there. And so I thought like, man, I had to create a way, um, figure out a way for a dental practice to get reviews. And so we, we sort of did our pivot and went from an SEO company to a company, you know, that was solely, you know, focused on helping a dental practice get reviews. Wow. Now, now I know what a lot of the doctors listening right now are thinking. They're thinking, you know what, Stuart, I've, I've got a marketing company. I've got a website. I'm running Facebook ads. I've got my Twitter. I've got my Instagram. I'm, I'm doing all that stuff. Right. What, what, what's really kind of the difference between that and, and reviews? Sure, sure. So there's, you know, I always say there's like a thousand and nine things that we can do to market our practice. But, um, you know, the truth is we, we worked with over, you know, 2000 practices through the years. And we found that really uh, you would call it the, the DDS trust triangle, right? There's three things that a practice needs to do to to really stand out. There it is uh, to really stand out and become the most trusted dentist in their town. And so the first first thing I always share is like, you know, Tim, you got to have you got to have your own website. It's got to be mobile friendly. It's always surprising how many practices still don't have a mobile friendly website. Um, it's got to be up to date. And we highly recommend you have some sort of feature to allow patients to send text messages, right? Everyone's got their, their practice phone line, but we, you know, patients more and more, they like to text. And so we recommend you have a, 
uh, up-to-date website, mobile friendly. It's got a text feature on it. And then the other side of the DDS trust triangle I talk about is, you know, you got to be doing social media. Um, we've been hearing about it for, you know, years and years, but the truth is most of us, you know, as, as dentists, we created maybe a Facebook page. We had a web guy, you know, 10 years ago, create a Facebook page that has just been sitting in Facebook space. And so we always say like, Hey, you know, you ought to be active on social media. Ought to be, you know, posting things that are relevant, interesting, um, and often. And then at the base uh, and the core of the DDS trust triangle is your reviews. And so uh, we recommend that you get 300 reviews and you focus on those reviews where it counts, which is on Google. Okay, so so three hundred reviews, right? Yeah, right. Why do the reviews matter so much? Like, like walk me through you, right? Kind of the anatomy of someone going online, getting ready to to search for a new dentist in the area. Yeah. So if I move to a new area, or if I've been here for a hundred years and I'm looking for a dentist, I may or may not ask a friend or family. Right? We all know about the referral process, and that's a powerful process. But the truth is, whether you know, my mom refers me to Dr. Jones, the first thing that a patient is going to do, you know, in, in our day and age is we're going to jump to Google and we're going to look up that practices reviews and make sure that everything looks good before we call and book the appointment. And so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. The, the practices that are really leveraging, you know, online reviews, specifically Google reviews, are the practices that are absolutely thriving. And the practices that aren't, you know, are sitting there kind of scratching their heads, wondering like, okay, man, I wonder why I never get any, you know, patients from the internet. And it's, it's literally as simple as having the most and best Google reviews, uh, which it praises is our focus. Wow. Okay. Right. Because if you're searching for that dentist, you're not necessarily going on Facebook and typing in, you know, dentist near me, you're going on Google and typing in, you know, dentist, you know, Austin, Texas, or, you know, dentist, you know, whatever town you live in. And then that's the first thing to really pop up is that, that profile page with the review. So it's not necessarily the, the social media or the Twitter or the, the Facebook or, or even our own website. It really right. is those Google searches then. Yeah. So all this expensive, crazy marketing, it may or may not be effective, right? But really, we want to start with our Google reviews. We want to make sure that we have the most and best, you know, positive Google reviews in town. And, you know, we, threw, we always throw out the number 300. Um, years ago, I was talking with a, a prominent uh, dental consultant out of Arizona, right? Great guy, had a good, you know, consulting practice. And, and he was like, you know, Stuart, it's interesting. All of the most profitable practices, they all had one thing in common. They all had, you know, 300 or more testimonials. And um, this was back in the day when online reviews were a new thing. And so I sort of, you know, uh, I was kind of uh, intrigued by that piece of data. I thought to myself, that's interesting. You know, the modern online, the modern testimonial, of course, is an online review. And that's kind of a cool benchmark to help a practice achieve, get 300 reviews on Google. And so typically, you know, practices, you know, you, if you look at your competitors, you know, they'll have 20, 40, 100, you know, maybe a couple hundred reviews. Very rarely will you find a practice that has, you know, 300 and plus positive reviews. And so that's where that's where we want to be. And, and that's what our software and our program is all about. All right. So, so really that 300 number, it's a big enough number that, that you're kind of out reviewing everyone else that's out there who may have 50 or 75 or, or 25. But, you know, I know I hear 300 and I'm thinking that's a lot of reviews. How long is that going to take me to get there? Right. How, how quickly can, can you as a doctor get your practice to, to that number? Yeah. Good, good question, Tim. So, you know, when we sort of explain the 300 review principle to new practices we're working with, often they're, you know, they get really excited and they're like, awesome, Stuart, can we do it in like three months? You know, we'll just invite everyone and let's do it. And I always, you know, pump the brakes a little bit and I say like, well, well yeah, you know, we, we want to get them fast and we will, but we don't want to get them too fast. You know, for example, Google, just like any other website, has its own algorithms. And uh, if you've been in practice, say, 20 years, for example, and you've gotten, you know, 10 reviews over 20 years, as soon as you start to pick up the review pace, and, uh, you know, if you were to get like 100 reviews in a month, it may or may not look fishy to the Google algorithm. So to stay within, you know, what they deem to be normal for a healthy practice, uh, we always shoot for 10 to 15 positive reviews like clockwork every single month. And so uh, to get to 300 reviews, kind of our goal with each office is, you know, we're looking at like a 24 month, you know, period. 
Okay. So, so you really do, you want to do it slow and steady, not overnight, not all at once, because that's going to get flagged by the algorithms of something fishy. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. So, right. Where do we get our reviews? How, how do we start doing this? Do we, do we automate this process? Do we ask our patients to do it? Do we, right. What does this look like? Yeah. So typically, um, you know, maybe some of your listeners have had this experience, but you know, they'll, they'll start to, you know, they'll get it and they'll be like, okay, yes, you're right. We need to start building reviews. And then they'll start to, you know, get really fired up and start asking patients as they leave the office, like, you know, Hey, patient Jim, you know, you've been coming here for years, man. Can you please go home and leave, leave me a review? And patient Jim will be like, yeah, happy to do it. You know, Dr. Jones, um, I'll do it right when I get home. And they walk out the door with good intentions. And of course, you know, out of sight, out of mind, they'll forget. And so, um, through the years, we've tried every which way to help the dental practice get reviews. We always go back to the simple truth, um, Tim, that if we make it easy for patients while they're in the office to leave a review, they'll do it. Uh, if we ask them to go home, of course they won't, they'll forget. And then if even if we automate a message, they'll do it part of the time. Um, but yeah, we, we really focus on helping patients uh, do a quick review while they're in the office. Wow. Right. And that's so powerful. And, and that's actually something we see across some of the most successful companies out there is they're removing in technical terms what we call friction, right? The, the, the amount of effort that it takes to do something. Because like you said, by the time a, a patient's home, their kids are on their mind now, their business is on their mind, their, their work, right? All of a sudden life invades. Whereas if you're in the dental office and you can make this really easy, your chances are much higher of getting that review then. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the way that we do it, um, basically patient checks in, um, they get a text message right when they're in the front office after check-in from our software. And it's basically a welcome text. And it, it says, you know, more or less, Tim, hey, thanks for checking in ABC Dental. Um, you know, welcome. We're working on building our reviews. If you have a great experience, please consider leaving us a review. Really wow. simple, uh, clean process. Uh, many times patients, what are they doing in the front office? They're hanging out on their phones. Um, so nine times out of 10, they'll go ahead and execute uh, a positive review right then and there. Um, but as you can imagine, you know, not all patients will. And so uh, each office we work with, we give them what we call a praise pack, which is kind of like a, a in-office review kit, which includes, um, it's always crazy, but these, uh, these gum signs that we put up at each operatory. And these gum signs simply say, ask how you can get a free pack of gum. Hmm. And so that's sort of a conversation starter for for the staff. So if a, a patient says, you know, if you're working in an office, patient says, Hey, Tim, what's up with these gum signs, man? How do I get a pack of gum? Then it's a really easy, non-awkward uh, conversation for the staff to say, Oh, you know, you we're building our reviews. You probably got a text when you checked in. Um, if you don't mind, click the link, leaves a quick review. And, you know, as a small thanks, we'll give you a quick pack of gum. Really wow. small call to action, nice little, you know, review nudge while they're in the office. Many times patients will say, Oh, happy to do it. I'm in the chair anyways. Boom. Knock out a quick review. Really simple. And then uh, if for whatever reason, patient didn't leave a review while they're in the office, then after the fact, they get an email reminder. Hey, you know, thanks for coming in today. Click here to leave us a review. Click here if your experience wasn't great. So really, really simple, effective, clean process to, you know, again, gather those positive Google reviews. Okay. Now, you know, you just mentioned something, right? We, we, you've kind of got three touch points as, as someone comes in. Do, do patients get annoyed at this? How do you really kind of build that, that, that ratio of reaching out enough versus, you know, driving someone crazy? Yeah, no, it's a good question and a valid concern. Uh, from the feedback that we've gotten from, again, over 2000 practices we've worked with, um, it's really, and these, these aren't annoying touches. These are soft touches. Um, and so, yeah, we, we haven't gotten too much pushback from patients on it. Okay. So it sounds like just really the experience and fine tuning this ha has created that experience where people are not feeling like they're being invaded and it's, it's a quick, easy experience for them to do. Exactly. Excellent. Exactly. Now yeah. the, other, the other thing you mentioned, you said, right, you know, they can leave a great review, but also if they've got some concerns too. You're inviting that. So, so what happens if, you know, a patient comes in and I don't know, I was out of decaf coffee that day or, or whatever stupid thing happened in my office. I, totally. I, what do I do with that, man? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing that practices really like about our platform is they, they're able to pick and choose which patients receive the review invite. 
Um, so one thing that I always caution practices is there's a lot of companies out there that will say, hey, doc, you know, we'll just automate the review process. We'll send a, a blanketed message out to all your patients and, uh, you know, we'll get them to leave a review. And, you know, what they don't consider is a lot of these patients, you know, like you said, doesn't matter, you know, how great of a service we provide them with, they're still going to be negative about whatever, right? And so we don't want to facilitate negative reviews uh, by negative patients. But a lot of the times, you know, we have a patient that seemed fine, but really they had a bad experience. Maybe, you know, Pam on, in our staff, like had a bad day and it was kind of grumpy and, and whatever. Right. And so we want them to be able to, uh, you know, leave us private feedback versus a negative public review. So in our platform, uh, when they get that welcome text, it has uh, a couple of buttons. It's got a button to leave a Google review. It's got a button to review us on our website. And then thirdly, it's got a button, hey, click here if your experience wasn't great. We'd love to make things mm -hmm. right and hear what happened. Interesting. So, so in that way, it's taking the positive reviews and funneling those directly to Google. Whereas if someone has a concern, if something wasn't quite to their liking, that's coming to us privately so we can deal with it in that aspect. It, exactly, Tim. Exactly. And then you know, one thing I'd like to bring up too is, you know, once we've gathered all these awesome reviews, uh, we want to we want to do our best to to repurpose them and plaster them everywhere, all over our website, our social media, um, even if uh, we have paper marketing like, you know, pamphlets, brochures in our practice. We want to bring these reviews to life and really leverage them in all of our marketing. And I think that's that's a big opportunity that um, I think a lot of offices are missing out on. That's one thing we we help you know provide practices with as well. Excellent. So so it really is right. It, it takes these multiple touch points. You you want to make sure you're garnering good reviews, not bad reviews. You want to make it easy on the patients, right? Incentivize them with a a, a pack of gum. These little things and, and doing all this can really lead to to getting those ten or fifteen reviews like clockwork every single month, so that you can get up to those three hundred reviews then. Exactly. And, and you know how it is, man, in grown man years, you know, that time passes quickly and you blink. And before you know it, it's like, oh my gosh, we have 300 reviews. We're getting patients that come through the door and repeatedly are telling us, I found you from your reviews. I found you from your reviews. And it's one of those great digital assets that can literally serve us um, throughout the remainder of our, our practicing life. And then, you know, the doctors that are looking to retire and sell their practices you know, if you can sell your practice with a, a, a large amount of positive Google reviews associated with the practice, it's a nice little cherry to add on top. And I, I know of a lot of different practices that have actually been able to charge a premium because they had, you know, created that asset through the years. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, right, all things being equal, if you're looking at two practices, right, same revenue, same valuation, I'm taking them with all the good reviews. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's sort of like a digital... Um, you know, billboard right there on the freeway in the most high traffic area saying, I am the best dentist. And that's, that's, that would be my message for the day, Tim. It's like, Hey, if you're a dental practice, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter, um, you know, where you went to school, your accolades, it, what matters is what your patients are saying about you on public forums like Google. And so I just want to really urge you know, every practice out there, even if they don't work with praise, but just to understand that you have the ability literally to stand out in your market um, and stand out and become literally the most trusted dentist in your town by having the most and best positive reviews on Google. And of course, we love working with practices. We specialize with dentists, really know and love the space. And, and uh, yeah, we'd love to help uh, anyone out there that's looking to achieve that goal. Yeah, absolutely. So now I know we spent some time talking about Google. What about other review sites that are out there? Where do things like Yelp factor into this? Yeah, so Yelp is interesting. So Yelp, I'm a, I'm in Southern California, so Yelp in my market is a big deal. And uh, and you ought to you know you ought to you know implement a plan to get positive reviews on Yelp as well. Um, however, I I definitely would caution practices. You know, don't spread yourselves too thin. First and foremost, focus on Google because I would say by far Google is the leader in online reviews. And so um, depending on your market, um, you want to focus on Google, but you might want to focus on Yelp. Um, there's also uh, a review site called Health Grades, which makes sense. And then lastly, I would say uh, Facebook, you know, also makes sense to gather reviews once and that's that's a good that's a good go-to plan maybe after you've achieved achieved those 300 reviews on google then definitely you want to look in those other directions as well
Okay, so, so we shouldn't necessarily ignore those other platforms, but we certainly want to plan for how we're going to saturate the market and we're going to get those reviews out there then. A hundred percent. And then, and then again, you know, make sure that you're, you're, you're showcasing and you're repurposing your positive reviews on your practice website. Okay. And, and that can be as simple as taking a screenshot of some of these reviews and putting them up on the website. Like you said, just repurposing them. Yeah. Repurposing them. We have uh, what we call trust badges. So every practice we work with, we put, um, you know, uh, our praise trust badges throughout the website, which basically showcases, uh, you know, the practices, positive reviews. Cause the idea is, you know, when people look online, they don't know where to go. They just go to the, the doctor with the most and best reviews. And then we want them to jump to the website and, uh, you know, have a, have a, a nice clean up to date website, but then, for them to be flooded and and seeing more positive reviews and hopefully call and book book an appointment. Okay, I, I mean you make it sound so easy. Are, are there things we should avoid or that we should be looking out for as we're asking patients and we're gathering these reviews? Or are there mistakes that you see people making? Yeah, um, I would just caution people again, just to you know focus where it, it matters. Um, in the past, we've start we've started to work with the practice and the doctor you know, might mention, mention something like Stuart, oh, we already have like, you know, like hundreds of reviews. I think we're good, man. And, and then we'll look up their Google reviews and, and we'll have to like, unfortunately point out like, well, doctor, you actually hardly have any reviews. And the ones that you have sadly are negative reviews. And then come to find out that all of these positive reviews that they've had coming through the door, they were being routed to some obscure, you know, website that no one really even knows about. Um, and so I always use the example, Tim, like, you know, my name's Stuart, so I could start, you know, stewreview.com and I can uh, post like a thousand positive reviews for your practice there. They might all be real great reviews, but it won't do your practice any good because they're not in the in the right place. And so not to, you know, sound like a dead horse, but man, Google reviews, that, that's where it's where it's at. So focus where focus where it matters and and know where you're at. You know, a lot of a lot of practices. They're so busy practicing uh, dentistry and, and doing their doing their job that they've never even taken the, the time um, to simply do a Google search and see where they're at. So I would encourage practices as well, just to simply see where you're at, know where you're, where you're starting, and then set a review goal, whether it's 300 reviews with us or whatever. Um, and and don't only set it with yourself, um, but set a review goal review goal with your staff mm -hmm. and and really. You know, explain to your staff, get everyone around, do the whole huddle thing, get everyone around and say, hey, reviews are a big deal. Uh, we want to build a culture of reviews in our practice. We want to provide an excellent service experience for our patients. And uh, here's our, our uh, you know, ambitious goal. We want to become the most trusted dentist in our town. And we want to get X amount of reviews on Google. And again, we recommend 300. But whatever that number may be for your practice, get everyone on the same page so everyone um, has that culture of, you know, positive reviews and, and providing a good experience. Okay. Wow. Well, what, a, what a great, powerful path for, for someone to run on, right? It's an achievable goal. It's something you can get to. It's something that's doable. But I know my head's kind of fast forwarding. And, you know, let's say we, we've, you know, done this over 24 or 36 months and I've got my 300 reviews. Do I just get to kick back and like relax now? What do I do yeah. once I get the 300 reviews? Yeah, truth, truth be told, Tim, you know, if that's, you know, if, if, a, if a practice is satisf satisfied and they, they have the most and best reviews in town, like, you know, they may or may not be good. However, I always caution practices. You might want to, you know, consider continuing because no one wants to be the dentist that had great reviews up until, you know, say 2010, because every review is dated. And so when I'm looking for, uh, you know, a business to work with, a practice to go to, I'm looking at the reviews, but I'm also noticing the date, right? And so we want to make sure that our reviews are fresh, they're up to date. Uh, people want to know about experiences from patients that are happening currently versus back in the day. So um, yeah, for that reason, I, we always recommend continuing some sort of review process. All right. So that way you're keeping your reviews fresh, up to date, and, and they're not you know, from 10 years ago. And that way that new patient who's searching for you will see fresh content, so to speak, and fresh reviews. Exactly, exactly. And then the question we always get is, hey, is this good for like my Google presence, all that SEO stuff? The, the short answer is yes, 100%. As a rule of thumb, the more reviews you have on Google for your for your practice, the better um, Google views you as a business and will likely, you know, reward you by a higher ranking 
you know, amongst your competitors. Yeah. So, so really adding these reviews in is it's not competition to your marketing company, but it can help supplement the work that they're already doing so that when people do search for you, not only do you have that broad presence behind you from the, the social media and the website and the SEO, but you've got the reviews on Google that's going to drive that new traffic to your practice. Exactly. And when I, you know, my, my heart kind of, you know, breaks a little bit when I think about dentists and, and how much they've invested in their education, gosh, purchasing a practice, investing in, you know, uh, amazing equipment within the office and just working so hard for so long to have their entire reputation damaged by some negative freaking Nancy that, you know, who knows what happened while they're in the practice, um, went home and wrote a negative review and then a couple of others did it. Next thing you know, you know, all these years you were avoiding all of these new potential patients just because you had negative reviews or, or no reviews and your neighbor down the street had some sort of a process like praise um, and were, were winning those patients looking for a good dentist online. So I highly encourage you guys have come this far with all of your efforts to uh, invest in your reputation, invest in your local trust and do that through, you know, positive reviews on Google. Yeah. Well, it, right. And it's amazing that the power that good reviews can have in overcoming those negative reviews, right? You know, everyone has a bad experience here and there, right? Every business is going to have, you know, a negative experience with some customer somewhere. That's just the facts of life. But if, you know, for that one negative review, you've got 300 positive ones, that goes a long way in correcting that negative review, doesn't it? 100%. And, you know, I always tell doctors, Tim, that we work with, I say, hey, you know, don't, don't be afraid of the occasional negative review. If you have an excessive amount of authentic, positive, real reviews, you know, when that, you know, inevitable, like you said, the best, best practices, you know, that inevitable negative reviews comes around every, every now and then, if anything, since we have so many positive reviews, it makes our reviews look more authentic. Yep. <laughs> and so, um, negative reviews are only a problem if you have a small amount of positive reviews. And so, with uh, with our platform, that's that's really simple to achieve. Wow. Well, 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 you have just shared some amazing insights with us, Stuart, and I, I appreciate that so much. And thank you for helping make these reviews accessible to, to doctors out there. Now, one of the fun things is you also own your business. You are a successful business owner. And so not only do we get to talk to you about you know what you do, but I like to kind of dive in and figure out what makes you tick and how you've been successful because these are lessons dentists can also use aside from, from getting the, the reviews that are out there. And so, you know, have you been reading any books lately or you have some favorite books for entrepreneurial dentists that they should be diving into and taking a look at? Totally, Tim. So I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I'm not a big reader. I'm a big uh, book listener, I guess you could say. I'm a, I'm a big fan of audible.com. So um, I, I like to, you know, try to listen to like an hour a day of, of some sort of business book um, to help me kind of grow and get to the next level. But a couple of books that really stand out are, uh, you know, the book Goals by Brian Tracy. Um, so Brian Tracy is kind of a, a um, you know, he's kind of a guru back in the day. And um, he wrote a book that always early on in my career uh, really helped me. Um, basically know how to set goals, um, the importance of setting goals and how to execute goals. So goals by Brian Tracy is awesome. And then another one that I really like is, uh, by Jack Canfield. So he was the guy that wrote, uh, uh, chicken soup for the soul. So he's, he's written a bunch of cool books and, and I really like his stuff too, but, um, he wrote a book called success principles. And that's just another one that I've gotten a ton out of. Um, and I've listened to it a whole bunch of times. So yeah, Goals by Brian, Brian Tracy and Success Principles by Jack Canfield. I'd highly recommend to your listeners. And, uh, and anyone who's not listening to Audible, man, I, I love that app. Are you an Audible guy, Tim? I am a huge Audible fan. I yeah, absolutely yeah. love it. And, I, and usually it starts with me listening to an Audible. And if it's really impactful, I'll get the Kindle. And then from there, I end up with the physical copy. So right, yeah. we consume things in different ways. Totally, totally. And then, and then just, uh, you know, just cherry picking those, you know, industry specific uh, podcasts, you know, like, like your podcast, you know, so um, I highly recommend picking a couple podcasts and, and just being a regular listener on those too. Yeah. Now, you know, 
running a business, Stuart, it is hard, right? It, it is a grind day in and, and day out. But, you know, it, it, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, right, I work hard and I'm sure you do too. But but how do you maintain a, a positive, productive, successful mindset? Are, are there habits that you do on a regular basis to, to really keep yourself going and, and stay positive? Yeah, I think it's just keeping the end in mind. You know, it's like, what's my purpose? You know, what? why am I doing all this? Like, you know, um, I think having a, a, a goal that's kind of like a, a long-term goal is really helpful. I think having an overall purpose, um, I think, is, is really motivating. And, uh, and I think also, like, you know, being an entrepreneur is, is sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's either something that you are or you're not. And so I've always felt like that's sort of been my thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then just surrounding yourself with the right, uh, peer group, um, and the right mentors, um, you know, early on in my career, it's like, I didn't have the right mentors. And so I think that's something looking back that, you know, I would, uh, I would have gotten earlier, um, good mentors. And then, um, yeah, I think that makes it, makes a big difference. And then just the simple things, right? Like, uh, like daily exercise, like, proper you know sleep regimen like proper water intakes you know simple stuff like that like i think goes uh goes a long way yeah no it, it has a, a huge impact so i've i've had a couple of sleep issues lately getting those fixed and, and it's amazing what an impact sleep has right it, it's just absolutely fundamental right those little things that you can do to help you maintain that positive productive attitude now you, you kind of just hit on something that that you would have done differently if you had to start your career over which was you would have found some some mentors and the right peers, right? Being around the right people. So can you talk a little bit about that? And then maybe what some other things that you would do differently if you were starting over again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the mentor thing, right? So I, uh, I made the mistake early on to um, seek advice from a guy who was successful in one business, but not necessarily successful in my business. Right. And so that sort of I felt like, you know, almost set me back a little bit. And so if I were to go back and do it again, I would find a guy that uh, had achieved a lot of success building a dental software company, right? Because mm. that was what I was trying to do. And, uh, and then thinking about, you know, what I would do different again, um, I definitely would, would work more on partnerships, right? And so, uh, so my last company, I, I ran it from you know, for a handful of years and it was a successful business and, and, uh, did well and all that good stuff. But my gosh, I, I probably could write a book on how to not grow a business as far as, you know, I did it in a way that was, was, uh, it, you know, it was, it was really tough. So each day I would go and visit 15 practices, you know? And so, uh, it was kind of, kind of crazy, but each day I, for 10 years, I passed out two dozen donuts to dental practices. And each day I would, you know, sign up an office and office or two and go on my way. And I built a, a good business that way. Right. And was able to sell it in 2019 and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, now that I'm doing praise, I'm, I'm trying to, to do a lot more things like creating partnerships, you know, with guys like you and, and leveraging partnerships. So anyone in the space, uh, anyone in business, whether you're, you're in the, the dental space or, you know, you're a practicing uh, dentist, I highly recommend um, creating fruitful partnerships with people um, that are in your industry. Right. And, and this is something dentists can do too, right? They, they can reach 100%. out to the, the medical community. They can, you know, so, so my wife actually does a, a lot of work with phrenectomies on, on infants to help them better feed once they're born. And she's yes. got great partnerships with a lot of lactation consultants in the area. And so, and that's a huge source of yes. business for her and vice versa, because they, they serve each other and they help each other. And so, right. When we talk about partnerships, I, I don't know that this is something a lot of dentists really think about is, is who are my key kind of non-competing professionals professionals that I can work with, that I can help and they can help me. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, a lot of specialists, you know, they'll, they'll kind of reach out to the, the mm -hmm. general dentists in their area and all that stuff. But I'm always even surprised at the specialists, you know, um, they won't really have a robust process. You know, they'll have like, you know, Tammy from their office, maybe once a month, pass out some, you know, some, some cards or whatever, but that's, that's it. And so, yeah, Definitely. I would highly recommend uh, making partnerships for, for your business, whatever business that may be, um, a high priority. Wow. 
Well, hey, Stuart, this has been an absolute wealth of knowledge. And I know I'm walking away more excited about reviews. I feel more confident in it. And I know I want to implement some of the lessons that I've learned from you, right? Just simple takeaways. Things like, right, when a patient walks in, make it easy for them to review them. So how can people get in touch with you, Stuart? How how can we find out more about you and and kind of explore if this is right for your practice? Yeah, so... um... Would love for anyone that's interested um, in talking with one of our growth specialists to just go to our website. Our website is praise.com. So P-R-A-Z-E.com. And uh, just book a demo, book a growth session, and either me or one of my reps will jump on the phone and, and um, we'll take some time to kind of look at your what you're doing, see what's working, see what's not working, and see if what we're, we're offering makes sense for your practice. Well, excellent. Hey, I I know I'm excited. I hope if you've listened to this, you're excited too, because you really do have the opportunity for you to become the most trusted dentist in your local area using reviews. It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but it's an achievable goal. And I would encourage you to to pursue this. Once again, Stuart, any closing thoughts or things you want to leave us with before we sign off here? Yeah, just wanted to say thanks, man, for this opportunity. Um, excited to be chatting with you and, and look forward to, to speaking with um, any of your listeners out there that are interested in, in uh, you know, becoming the most trusted dentist in their town. And, and if you're thinking like, well, what would that do for me? You know, wh- what, would it, what would happen if I was the most trusted dentist in, in my town? You know, what would happen is, uh, you know, long term, you'd be able to attract those high quality patients that, um, yeah, that you're looking for. So, Look, uh, uh, look forward to speaking with them. And it's been great chatting with you, man. Appreciate it. Well, likewise. Hey, thank you again for, for sharing. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Dental Wealth Nation, where we help you build that amazing life of significance, right? Going, Stuart, back to what you just talked about, right? Have your why, have your purpose, right? We want to build amazing lives of significance so you can continue to take care of the people you love, support the causes you care about, and really, make that difference in the world. But to do that, you can't just listen to these episodes. You've got to implement the lessons. And so that that's my hope for you is don't just listen, get out there, implement these strategies. And if you do that, you're going to make it a great day. I'm your host, Tim McNeely, and we'll see you again soon on Dental Wealth Nation. Thanks, Tim. You've been listening to Dental Wealth Nation. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. Join us next time as we pull back the curtain to reveal the often hidden advice and strategies used by today's most successful individuals and families and help maximize your net worth so you can take even better care of the people you love. Till next time, make sure to hit the website at dentalwealthnation.com. 